guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the pay to win account and we are doing a continuation from yesterday's video, which was in regards to our tier three stones. So today we're gonna to be looking at the Stone of Shadow, the T3 stone that increases the agility heroes. So we're gonna run through our list just like we did yesterday. And then we're also going to look at the priority. It is a little different priority than what we seen yesterday with our strength heroes because they are a different class of heroes. So the first one we're gonna look at, of course, is Alna, guys. Alna, one of the most powerful heroes that have been released in recent patches in AFK Arena. She is used in a ton of formation. She's used with Damon. She's used with Lucretia. She's used with Grez. Very, very powerful hero to build. She is one of the, the two top hero priorities when it comes to the Stargazer. Her and Lucretia are the biggest heroes to look when you're building them out. Second hero we look at is um, Athelia. So Athelia with her tier stones, she brings a absolute crazy amount of additional power. If you have Athelia built with that plus 30 signature item with her furniture, she can burst down any hero opposing her. So right on the opposite side of her in just a couple quick seconds, she is that strong guys. Since we've seen the build with her furniture come out and I cannot wait to see exactly what we do with the glyphs that are going to be dropping on Tuesday and how much more powerful you can make Athelia or how much more power you can give Athelia when it comes to glyphing them out. Third one I would look at is Lucretia. Big reason why she is not number one is even if you have the tier two gear, doesn't really make that big of a difference. It is not a life or death situation when it comes to Lucretia because you're just looking for the cheese factor that you get with her signature item. So it allows when a hero dies, she gets a 50% boost at that plus 30 signature item. But again, that's why she's not number one. A lot of people do have her built though. So, so one of the PSAs or the disclaimers on this one is if the hero that you have built, so if you don't have Alna built up to that level, if you don't have Athelia built up to that level, go ahead and just build Lucretia because again, she is going to be a really strong priority when it comes to getting the job done in campaign stages, as well as the Abyssal Expedition, a lot of different places in AFK Arena, she really does shine. Next one we look at, of course, is Taylene. A lot of people have kind of forgotten about Taylene since we have Lucretia, since we have Alna, but with the introduction of the Celestial Tower, she becomes much more of a priority just because we're pretty limited with the heroes that we have within the faction right now. We got a couple tanks, we got a couple supports. When it comes to the healing aspect and the Celestial Heroes, not really many choices short of Taylene when it comes to building her out. If you've been playing a little while, you probably already have Taylene built because that was long before we had Alna, before we had Lucretia, when we were building those heroes out. Next hero we look at is Laika. So a lot of people do really underestimate Laika and the power that she can bring. When you look at her in formations, if she's in the back middle with her ultimate ability, she can kill heroes super fast, guys. She is a very, very powerful hero. With the haste buff and the energy buff, she can destroy them very quickly. And the other big thing is with the foe's fragility skill, defense rating is decreased by 25%. So as the enemies in the campaign start getting more level deficient, when they start getting stronger, this becomes more and more important to allow you to do additional damage to them. With her nine of nine furniture, this affects two heroes. So out of five heroes on the enemies, you're affecting two of them with a 25% defense rating reduction, which again is very huge when it comes to doing the damage out of there. Next one we look at is Zorath. Still waiting to build him, still waiting to max him out. Very cool hero. He is a, a warrior which wears agility, similar to Alna, but he does an incredible amount of burst damage, similar to Athelia. If you're building him, if you have him up there with the tier stones, and again, if you have him built, I wouldn't go ahead and max out, you know, max out the gear on him as a big priority unless you have him built. If you have him built to Ascended, um, I would go ahead and start maxing out his gear. But if you just have him at, let's say, Elite Plus, possibly even Legendary, without the signature item, he's not going to be super effective. Still does perform well, but not at the level when you start getting the signature item and when you start getting him into higher levels. So the next one we look at is Kren. Big thing with Kren is one, he is a solid carry in the Mauler Tower, which is awesome. We've seen him use in a couple different formations, including the Scrag and Bade team, that he does an absolute sizable amount of DPS. Plus, he brings an effect 
to the team. Um, not only the stun effect, but he also negates some of the damage that enemies do, which again, increases the survivability of the team. Looking at like Enshrouding Bomb, very, very strong when you have a team over on the enemy side. Not only does their crit rating go up, but allies in Shroud Bad Smoke cannot be dealt critical strikes. Again, increasing the survivability when it comes to a Scrag Invade team or someone who's actually on the enemy side. So looking short of Kren, we do have Raku. Raku is a hero that has been used in a lot of, the, or in the um, Twisted Realm formation with the, not Dark Nomura, it's it's the Dark um, Arden, the, the Dark version of Arden. We've seen him in there absolutely doing insane amount of DPS. Plus he has a crowd control aspect. We've seen him behind Arthur that worked really well. He is a priority. Um, big thing with him is his ultimate ability is kind of broke. He seems to do a lot more damage without ulting, which is what we seen a while ago with Isabella before the rework. Isabella's ultimate ability provided almost no damage. Um, we see similar to Raku. It does help when it comes to the campaign and the stages that he's in there, but the boss battles themselves does not really make a difference. All right, so next hero we look at is Pharrell. So Pharrell's a hero that brings continuous damage to the entire team, which is the reason why strengthening up his gear makes a very big difference, guys. He can actually put spirits, which disintegrate energy, almost across the entire battlefield, which is kind of crazy. So the energy disintegration that he does, does is very strong. Plus he has a crowd control aspect, plus he has multiple crowd control aspects. So this accursed arrow um, can actually do a nice reduction. It can also interrupt the enemies. You have his terrorize ability, which terrifies three enemy stuns for three seconds. Plus when you combine his signature item, which allows the attack rating reduction, and also his furniture, which turns the normal attacks into accursed arrows. And there we go. So if target is haunted by three evil spirits, which the stronger he is, the more these evil spirits are up. For all his normal attacks, stun the target. So he just brings massive amount of crowd control to any team. Plus he does a considerable amount of damage. Not quite as much as, you know, a, a Lucretia or a Taylene, but you also have to think the attack rating reduction, the energy reduction, and the multiple forms of crowd control make Pharrell an absolute monster. When you start getting his tier three gear, it just adds to that ability to do damage when it comes to the teams. Last one we look at is Eron. Big thing with Eron, um, he does damage and he does a considerable amount of damage even without the tier three gear. That, that's really the big thing to remember with him is you want him there for the five pull, but you want him mainly there for the crowd control. The crowd control is really the big thing that he brings. Um, time enemies are frozen is increased to four seconds. So with that plus 30 signature item, you can double the amount of stun time. Plus he has a slow. I know he is a burst hero, which is the reason why I built his weapon first, but ultimately he is not a big priority when it comes to the tier stones, because like I had said earlier, um, he will do well and he relies on the crowd control aspect to burn him out. He does enough damage. I, honestly, he does a considerable amount of damage all by himself. So now let's talk about how to build them. So the second part gets into exactly what we're looking for, what to build first. So the first you wanna build is the helmet. You might say why, big thing is right here guys, is the crit. So crit in this game brings your attacks to a critical strike. Critical strike amplifies the damage that you're doing within the battlefield. This is how we can burst down heroes. So when you start getting into level deficiencies and the heroes are a lot stronger that you're facing, a lot of times they can heal, a lot of times they can shield. The crit is what brings the burst damage to take those targets to zero HP to kill them off quicker with the crit. So if you build Lucretia and you're adding more crit on there, when she does her massive boost to attack rating, you're also giving her a boost to the crit rating, which is going to allow her to burn targets down very quick. Which brings us to the second one is the weapon, guys. So right here, you do get a, a attack rating increase. And again, this brings crit. That is really what you wanna focus on. Um, the crit is the most important when it comes to maximizing the damage. And also the crit a lot of times has different effects depending on what it is. We've seen artifacts or not artifacts, um, relics when a hero is crit, it stuns them. There's a couple different aspects, but crit will amplify the damage that heroes are doing. 4% attack is good 
1% or this one crit is really, really good when it comes to building those out. Followed by the boots. The boots, another one for the attack rating that you're getting in here. A little bit more survivability with the HP and the defense, but ultimately you want to boost the attack rating after you've already amplified the crit. And then the final one, of course, is the chest. This is just straight, um, oh, I don't even think we have another stone on there, tier two, there we go. So this does bring HP, defense, physical, and magical resistance. If your agility heroes are taking a lot of damage, majority of the time they're gonna die. Um, they are not built to take damage like a tank does. Um, the enemy has to be crowd controlled. So if you're relying on the HP and the defense of your agility heroes in a back row or in a DPS manner, this is not going to make a difference. You really want to focus on that helmet first so you can go ahead and magnify the crit rating that your heroes are going to get. So all right, guys, so that will do it for our agility heroes. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. We'll be coming out with our final intelligence um, tier three stone kind of priority or guide in just a little bit. So again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.